Zop is back with another video. Today I'm gonna be uh, basically introducing you guys to my Butler's garter snakes, Themnophis Butleron, giving you all a little bit of information on the species and uh, telling you guys how I take care of them in captivity. So to start off, these guys range from northeastern U.S. into parts of southern Canada, and uh, in my state, uh, in Wisconsin, they are native and they're. Uh, their conservation status is least concern and that was just recently uh, removed from special concern due to habitat loss and habitat fragmentation and human development and all that so uh, this is basically because they're a real specialized type of snake meaning they can only thrive in specific uh, habitats and uh, based off uh, what other organisms are in that environment they're a special species because of their diet and uh, the fact that they rely on crayfish burrows as a place of refuge and is where they brumate over winter, uh, which is basically hibernation, but for reptiles where they're still active and they're still gonna be moving just uh, way slower than they normally would. So they uh, go down into crayfish burrows uh, below the frost line and that's where they spend their winter. In captivity, uh, I provide them with mainly night crawlers uh, with uh, tilapia and the occasional frog or toad that I find. It's important to give garter snakes a varied diet uh, just because of the fact that they have so many uh, diverse prey items in the wild. You don't want to feed them too much of one thing. You want to give them a little bit of everything. So uh, in terms of setup, I have them in a 15 gallon uh, standard glass aquarium. And uh, I think this will, this will do good for them their whole lives, but I would like to upgrade them in the future just based off uh, how active they are. As with most garter snakes, they're really active. Uh, you know, you're gonna see them out and about foraging and whatnot. But they're actually active uh, in unusually cold weather. They're, they've been reported to be uh, found when there's still snow on the ground during early spring. And uh, I've seen them active during rain and, and you know 40 degree weather. They'll be out uh, at nighttime as well, they're nocturnal. So, you know, a very unique species of uh, snake in, in terms of behavior. Another cool fact is that this is uh, Wisconsin's smallest species of uh, garter snake. Max not at only like uh, two and a half feet, and that's for females. Uh, they're sexually dim dimorphic, meaning males are gonna stay uh, smaller at around a foot and a half, if that. So, um, you know, real small slender uh, stout short body snake and uh, I think that what you know what also makes them uh, a specialist species because maybe they're not uh, capable of creating their own burrows with uh, that such small of a head and um, they just use the crayfish burrows as a you know an easy opportunity to escape from predators and uh, the frost line during uh, cold winter months so um, you know they're they're reliant on crayfish burrows makes them uh, not being able to be found in habitats where there aren't crayfish present. I based the look of the tank uh, from the habitat that I found them in, which is basically a grassy lot or a huge grassy field behind some apartments. And uh, adding crayfish burrows is something I definitely wanted to incorporate in this tank in the future. You know, adding some crayfish lives so they can dig the burrows and the snakes would take refuge in them how they would in the wild. But yeah, I got this standard uh, water dish that they can fit their entire bodies in. They are semi-aquatic uh, type of snake, meaning they're gonna be spending a lot of time in or around water. So we wanna provide them with the opportunity to fully submerge themselves. And um, I provided them with a, a, a log hide with a hole in the middle of it that they like to go into as well as uh, them taking refuge underneath the log and so so they get a lot of uh, variety of and different options that they can hide in the tank actually is a dynamic it changes with the seasons uh, so like earlier in the year there weren't any barely any plants you know as soon as the snow melted and as course of as uh, spring progressed the grass started to grow in and new plants started to show up that i didn't even plant in here so it's a real natural you know uh, environment it's a, of course it's outside as you as you can tell so they get all of the uvb from the sun as they naturally would and uh, i actually have four individuals in this tank at the moment 
two females and two males, all adult. And this spring was actually the first year that they bred for me. And uh, it, it, it took me two years to actually do so as a, just a little side project of mine. You know, I'm, I've been watching maybe a little bit too much Brian Barczyk, but I, I really wanted to uh, try and breed them. So I put forth a lot of time and effort to do so. And uh, this sprint actually, one of the females took and she is gravid. Uh, so she will be having live babies um, in the near future, any day now from the looks of it. Uh, so I'll just open a tank one day to a whole bunch of baby snakes because garter snakes give live birth. These are a really rewarding species of snake to keep just because of how much character they have and how active they are. And um, you, you might see them, you know, actually follow you around with their heads because they're very visually attuned uh, snakes, meaning they rely uh, a lot on eyesight and taste when navigating their environment. So you're gonna see them out foraging, actively looking for food, opposed to you know a python who just sit and wait for their prey to come to them. That activeness uh, is, is in any conditions. They're gonna be active on all days: cold, rainy, wet, warm, hot. Um, they they can actually survive uh, parts of their body being frozen in the winter, and I've uh, personally seen them being out and active and extremely cold even uh, you know days where I have to wear a sweater or a coat I see them out and about so they're extremely cold tolerant species which uh, you would expect from them being so uh, northernly ranged I had to get a video out there on these guys because in terms of uh, the reptile hobby you know these guys aren't uh, really kept um, by garter snake keepers as, as much as other species so I think um, you know, I just I just wanted to show you guys how cool and unique and interesting they are. Definitely, um, you know, uh, unique from a lot of other garter snake species and just snakes in general, as far as that matter. But uh, yeah. Well, uh, that's about all for this one. I just wanted to you know get this out here and bring light to such a unique, maybe lesser known species of garter snake and. Uh, Hope you, hopefully you know you learn something new or find a new appreciation for these guys um, like i said they can be found anywhere and happen to be readily ab abundant in my home county of milwaukee so you know i hold them dear to my heart uh, just because of the fact that i consider them a, a rare species for wisconsin so the fact that they can be readily found in such urban settings is it, still a uh, you know, it's just interesting, they're, and they're equally as interesting in terms of behavior and looks, and hopefully you guys agree. So without further ado, uh, feel free to leave a like, a comment, and a subscribe is definitely appreciated.